Underground Reptiles, also at Cairo Zoo Troop, Calvary Chapel, Deerfield Beach. And here we teach our kids the important things of life, like how to play spoons in a fair and godly manner. Here we go. We have Matthew over here. Yeah! He is the, the champion. And we have Alex, the challenger, who's also tough. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put all your money on Matt, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, you first. Touch your tongue. Go, come on, go, go. Oh, I missed you. Miss I missed. Come on. All right, Matthew. Bring it on. Next time. Next time. Miss. Okay. Just bang. Okay. Just bang. Just bang. Just bang. Just bang. What's your thing? Okay. <laughs> you okay? I don't know. Okay. I can uh, I can hear that, Matthew. <laughs> oh. Welcome to 20 Minutes Underground, your YouTube weekly reptile online show for reptile enthusiasts like me. That's where I do the show. This week on Underground Reptiles, we look at some of the coolest, bestest animals that you could find anywhere. What are we looking at? Walmas. Woma pythons, one of my favorite pythons from Australia. Give me fits. I've tried to breed those things for five years in a row and I just can't never get those eggs to hatch solidly. It was a very poor outcome with them, but I love those snakes. Those and blackheads, I love. Are we doing blackheads? Oh, I love blackhead. Looks like somebody dipped their head in ink. It is the coolest thing in the world. What else? Carpets. Carpet pythons. Man, I remember the first time I saw a carpet python, I thought, that is the craziest looking animal. It looks like it has a, the head of a pit viper and the body of a boa. It was really crazy. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Hope you had a safe fourth. And I hope you, uh, you haters are having fun. <laughs> Band. <laughs> Underground Reptiles, we're coming at you guys with freshly hatched Woma Pythons. These guys cool. hatched out just the other day. You can right. see they still have their silver coat on them. Woma Pythons, one of the best looking snakes as babies, I think, because they got these uh, crazy looking tiger stripes on them. And uh, some have dorsal stripes. As you can see, this one right here came out with a nice dark dorsal stripe. But this one had that really orange head that will look even better once they shed out. These guys get about four feet, and uh, that's why some people are crossing them uh, with their ball pythons called the walls, which some people are into, some people aren't. You can do a lot with them. Um, you can try and breed them with some Angolans. You can try and uh, breed them back to different types of ball pythons, um, or you can just keep them as pets. Well, ball pythons make fantastic pets. Uh, we do a lot of, um, if kids are coming in looking for a docile snake that doesn't get too big, they get just sometimes a little bigger than uh, your ball python, which is four, maybe four and a half feet. So they work really well if you want to do a cage setup or they do really good in rack systems as well. One of the Australian pythons that come in and people love them. Um, so underground reptiles, we got Woma pythons available. As soon as they shed out, we'll start feeding them and they can be yours. So get them while they're hot. Dude, 
up. All right, guys, so this week we're talking about Australian pythons, and I think a perfect one to talk about here is the carpet python, probably one of the more popular Australian pythons that you see in the reptile industry. These are uh, come from the genus Morelia, species of Spilota, and there are several different subspecies of these animals. I'm going to show you guys two of the ones that we actually have in our store right now. Um, these are actually coastal IJ carpets that uh, crosses that I've got here in my hand. This is a baby. If you look right over here, this is actually a diamond jungle Irangaya cross, so it came from three different subspecies. Gorgeous animals. These guys are perfect intermediate snake. Just if you're looking for something, if you want to move beyond like those ball pythons that you heard Alex saying that he didn't like, I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> look at this. This is beautiful, guys. Hold it. We gotta take a break for this. I'm coming. Black guy can't have it. will take your wallet. All right. If, I hope you guys enjoyed that. As I was saying, great intermediate uh, snake to work with. If you're wanting to move beyond, let's say, the realm of the ball python, but you're not quite ready to do, let's say, a, a green tree python, the carpet pythons are great. They're more active than a ball python. All right, now it's important to note, guys, if you're looking at purchasing a baby carpet python, to remember that they do get a little bit larger than some of your other pythons, like ball pythons, um, or even like your uh, woma pythons. These guys can get anywhere from six to 10 feet. Some of the largest ones recorded, I believe were around 14 to 15 feet. Um, but those are locality specific, so do some research before you guys get into them. These guys are really easy to get feeding on rodents. Unlike some of your green tree pythons or some of your other arboreal pythons, they're semi-arboreal. So they're not going to spend as much time perching, let's say, as a green tree python, but they will spend some time perching, as you can see this guy's doing right here. They're also not necessarily as aggressive as green trees or some of the other arboreal pythons, but they're going to be a little bit more of a challenge, let's say, than a ball python. Great animals with great colors, like for example, if you're looking at like a high yellow jungle, Real bright colors, real cool patterning. If you're looking for something with a bit more pattern on them, you probably want to look at something like a diamond python. A lot rarer, but amazing patterning and coloring on them as well. Now these animals actually don't just occur in Australia. They occur in several other parts as well, including uh, New Guinea and Indonesia. Again, there's a few different subspecies of them, so do your research before you pick up a carpet python. But again, great animals, definitely worth owning. Fantastic colors, patterns. I know you guys will enjoy them. This is Alex. I won't start this segment off by saying I love Stephen Duffy. That's my boy. And regardless of how much I give him crap, he knows I love him. It's my boy. This one's for you, Stephen. This is a blackhead python. Now this is this is my baby, okay? I've raised this snake from a baby. Right now it's in shed, unfortunately. So the colors are a little bit dulled out. But this is Bison, all right? That's his name. It's one of the few snakes I've actually named. And I just, I adore this thing. Uh, blackheads are native to Australia. And they'll generally get anywhere from 8 to 11 foot, um, you know, in length there. And they're, they're just awesome. They eat anytime. This guy will eat when he's deep in shed. I mean, he'll, he'll eat a medium rat right now and not even care. Uh, he's right about a year old, and he's right about three and a half, four foot, approximately. Yeah, he's about three and a half foot. And this is my favorite snake in existence. Look at that. Now, it's it's kind of tough to tell, but if you look at the coloration there on the side, because he's in shed, you really can't see it. But all this little orange here, it's like bright, almost fluorescent, and it it almost just glows, like a cream color. And I mean, this thing is just. This is awesome. This is a real snake right here. It's not no ball python. It's not... Get out of here with that garbage. This is a blackhead python, all right? This, these are best snakes in existence. Coolest snakes, unique, primitive python. Look there on the face. They don't actually have heat pits like a lot of the modern pythons do. It's primitive python like a woma python. So if you get in closer on the face, it has no heat pits. Kind of tough to see because he wants to move around a lot. I mean, he's awesome. 
underappreciated animal. Not a lot of people, you know, have them because they're still still a little bit of money, but they're still. I mean, come on. Would you rather have this or like a honeybee ball python? No choice. I mean, this this thing is awesome. Ball python. Who is the ball python? It's pet rock. This is a snake. This is not a pet rock. This is a snake. All right. I don't mean to offend you, ball python people, but you bore me. You bore me to death. This is a snake. This is cool. This is what you need to get. Everyone loves blackhead pythons. What's going on there, YouTube losers? It's your good pal, Moody Booty. This week, we're talking about uh, Australian pythons. So I thought I would show you one of my favorites. It's called a Kenyan Samboa. Amazing, isn't it? Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, I wish one of those other idiots would have thought about showing that and talking about it. Don't worry, I'm here for you guys. Kenyan Samboa. Best Australian python around. I don't care what anybody says. Leave your comments under the section, I don't care. <laughs> now let's get on to what you guys are really here for. And that's milking me for free crap. This week, you'll be getting a Qaddafi! <laughs> now I know how Qaddafi feels. Phil. Instead of the Qaddafi, how about I just give you these set of tweezers that was just up Steve Butts. You could use them to pluck your eyebrows, to feed your Australian pythons, or whatever else you're afraid of because you're a wimp. I'm sending them to you because I somewhat tolerate you. Anyways, our contest comment winners this week. First up, Sergio Jim Nes. Jim Nes. Okay, very good. He says we would buy a buttload of fireworks. I assume by buttload he means the amount of fireworks he can cram up his butt. The small T. Oh wait, yeah. The small TNT looking ones and fill up a barrel and light the barrel and run dangerous as heck. Never doing it again, but it was extremely cool. There you are, officers. Now you know who caused that small forest fire. We do our part to help. Next up, Ghetto Reptile Zoo. Very interesting. Evidently, there's a reptile zoo in Harlem. Moving on. Mm -hmm. The best firework display is when me and the family go to Fort Benning in Phoenix City, Alabama. Oh, that makes sense. Now I know why he spelt Phoenix City wrong. He's from Alabama. Support all the troops there. At least that's smart. This we went. <laughs> He spent went wrong again. It was awesome. And I also had one of those giant Roman candles. Mine was 140 shots at the lake. Awesome. Besides the spell check, I do recommend the use of periods, commas, semicolons, capital letters after periods. You know, anything to help somebody read this gibberish would be very nice of you. I don't know what to say. Moving on, our good buddy, Max Sullivan, who's a huge fan of Moody Booty, writes, thumbs up if Ryan should do the comments from now on, and we all love Steve. Interesting. Andrew, how many thumbs up did that get? I think zero. Exactly. I won't even bother to read the rest of this comment because it's also probably stupid like that comment. Instead, I'll just give you this so you can go Qaddafi yourself. That's it from your pal Modi Booty. Now get out of here. Or else sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, Moody will cut you down. Is that shit <laughs> on backwards? <laughs> Shut up.
That's 20 Minutes Underground. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed your 20 Minutes Underground. Last week's question of the week is crazy. You guys, you guys got, hey, I'm talking, hey, I'm talking here. How about some love? Hi. Last week's question was so cool. I think the majority of the people that said they were at Disney thought that that was the best show, but the homemade, um, the homemade fireworks in the backyard, and there was one comment about every 4th of little. July celebrating freedom is incredible. Guys, amazing. Daddy. Freedom! There you go. <laughs> I think we watch Braveheart too much around here. <laughs> this week's question of the week is, what is the strangest food that your animal has ever eaten? For instance, I had an indigo when I was living in New York, I was a kid, and I had this indigo that used to eat chicken necks. And this thing got so big, I'm telling you, the thing was probably Hi. five inches around. And I'd never seen a, a snake eating chicken necks before. Are they on top of my, didn't I tell you not to get on my roof? Get off my roof. Yes. You scared me, Daddy. Good, get off my roof. I was just sick. So what's the strangest food, non-common, you know, like we asked about non-common, oh my goodness. <laughs> too funny, too funny. So what's the strangest food that your animal ever ate that That's technically crazy. speaking they're not supposed to eat? We want to know. We'll share it with you. The winner gets free crap. Is free crap good? Oh, yeah. Puppy food is great. Thanks for watching. We love you guys. Here we go. See you later. Uh, yeah. And have a great day.